hello everybody jesse here from jesse inspired how are you guys all doing so i want to welcome you back to my channel where we'll be continuing our discussion on how to create our own shell program and today we'll be discussing the frog system call we'll be introducing it but before we do that i want to show you what the expected results would be like because right now i'm thinking that there are a lot of us that are watching this video at this time of the upload that don't really understand what the expected results should be like what we are actually creating so first things first, I'm going to show you a shell program which I've done so far. And then I will show you the born again shell within your terminal. So I believe by seeing that you'll be able to conceptualize where we are going to. So without further ado, let's just get started. So currently, I'm in this directory where I have the source code to my own customized, my own version of the shell program. So I'm going to do an LS and realize I have a bunch of source codes, just like you will for every other program you want to create. I'm going to do a simple gcc asterisk c hyphen o and i'm going to call the name of this executable jesh j-e-s-h and i just want to point out that i'm not the only one currently working on this program i have a collaborator but for the sake of this tutorial i'm calling it jesh so don't get offended all right so but you guys get the points i'm going to hit enter and um right now if i do an ls you will see my file jesh which is a binary executable currently inside this my directory let me execute this program right now and watch what's going to happen so i'm going to hit jesh and bullseye did you notice what happened i have my cursor right now here in this my program you don't see this other um, shell program being executed down here rather you see this emoji this smiley right here sort of a happy face and then you see my cursor right here telling us that we have the ability to actually put in inputs to our program doesn't this make sense so let me just type in some regular um linux commands to see if this works so i'm going to type in ls wow realize that ls is actually listing out the list of files and directories inside this my current working directory isn't that wonderful let me do pwd realize that I, it's giving me the the path to my present working directory just like that so with this it shows that i can actually make my own version of the shell program it means that what was previously running right here which you saw on your terminal was actually a program just like the same way i have this my program right here jesh right now let me type in a command which doesn't exist in linux so i'm just going to type in something random and then it tells me command doesn't exist and just um for the sake of um user experience realize that the emoji is sort of sad all right so all right so that's just a little thing to just spice up your work a little but the idea is that right now i can actually make my own version of the shell program and it means that if this is actually a program what you see right here like i was telling you guys is actually an executable somewhere inside your file system inside your terminal and if you're looking at me and you have a terminal you have this thing right there if you have a linux program a linux terminal you actually have this right there so you have a program right there and most likely it is the born again shell the bash that is actually creating that possibility that you can actually put in an input from your keyboard interact with your operating system and give you the desired output so i'm going to prove it to you right now but before i do that let me just type in one more command in my own shell program exits and realize that it takes me back to my uh the current program that was running before i executed mine so let me just show you where this program is located within your file systems so we are going back to the genesis or the roots of our file system so to go there just type in cd forward slash just like that and i'm going to clear my terminal so it looks neat i'm going to type in an ls so i realize i have a bunch of directories within this my roots um directory but this is our directory of concern of interest so i'm going to cd right into it cd din just like that i'm going to do an ls so warning you're going to have lots of files because this is actually the binary directory so um the most um, used programs will be located inside this directory your your binary executables will be located right here so if i do an ls realize i have a bunch of executables right here but check this out check this out i have this right here bash can you see that so this bash is actually the program that executes when you boot your terminal when you um, open your terminal it is actually this bash program that gets executed that 
gives you the ability to receive input from your keyboard and interact with your operating system okay so the same way i created my gesh from a bunch of source codes that's how someone um, actually wrote this program and created this binary executable that literally runs within your terminal so before we get into the business of today um let me just prove to you that that is actually the program running in your terminal so let me just clear my terminal and cd back into the um directory which i was before um i think that is a um, cd uh, simple shell okay all right so from this directory i'm going to do an echo dollar dollar and um i know last time when we talked i told you echo dollar dollar gives you the process id of the current instance of the shell program well that is true in a sense that's actually true but it's fragmentary so right now i'm going to give you guys the whole truth and nothing <laughs> but the whole truth so what echo dollar dollar does is that it gives you the process id it gives let me type it right here so it gives the process id the process id of the current running process okay so why echo dollar is giving echo dollar dollar is giving us the um the pid of the current instance of the shell program is because it is the shell program that is running so any program that is running and you call the echo dollar dollar it will give you the process id of that program all right so if i type in echo dollar dollar again you realize it's still giving the same value because it's giving the process id of the current running program which happens to be our shell program and if this sounds a little bit confusing for you i have videos um in the description below where I actually address the concepts of the PID and the PPID and I suggest you go check them out. But right now, I'm going to execute that bash executable in my, direct, in my binary directory. And I'm actually putting the binary directory right here because in you know, the most times when we execute, we execute with the full stop, forward slash and the name. So we do this because we want to execute a, um, or a file or an executable inside our current working directory. But this one wants to execute right now is not right here is it no you don't see the bash um file here it's actually in our bin directory so that's why i'm putting the path so i'm going to execute this and from our previous teaching you learned that anytime you execute a program you create a new process a new instance of that program that has a unique id so if i execute this again i should expect that if i run my echo dollar dollar I should have a new PID for this my bash program. So let's try that. So hit enter. And you realize that it seems as though nothing happened. You just see uh, my command line appear like I had before. But let's go, let's look, let's look a little bit deeper by typing our echo dollar dollar. So you realize I have a new value for the PID because I've actually created a new process or a new instance of that my bash executable so i hope this makes sense all right so um this is just basically where we are headed where we'll have the ability to create our own shell and name it whatsoever you like but basically it's going to be performing similar functions to what the b the um the bash um program actually does in your terminal all right so let's just jump right into the business of today okay guys so we are currently where i want us to be we have the basics in the back that will give us the foundation to understand how to literally create our own processes with the fork system call now there are a bunch of things which i've written down here and a lot of them may seem pretty um challenging to understand so what i'm going to do is that i'll write a function and then we're going to execute the function and understand the fork system call by the behavior of our results okay but just for starters just know that the fork system called literally creates child processes and the child process has um it's a duplicate of the original parent process but it has few exceptions one of them being that the process id of the child is different from the process id of the parent and we are going to be discussing the return value and all these things in a moment but for now just join me and code along if you can let me open up your file fork.c all right so i'm going to include include uh, stdio.h and to use this system call you actually also need to include this header file right here this one uni std.h so i'm going to include that right now uni std.h let me write a simple main function void just like that 
and um, what was going to happen i'm going to write um print out print f um like i told you a, a child process is actually a duplicate okay so i'm going to write before for i was single <laughs> i was single okay single no let me just write i was one okay, that's better all right so before fork i was one and now i'm gonna call the fork function fr okay just like that okay so i think i haven't closed um the i haven't closed this let me put a new line and close this just like that now i'm gonna call the fork function right here so fr okay now as we go on, I told you I'll be explaining the concepts. The first one is that we're going to see the syntax of the fork system call. The parameters, it accepts no parameters, okay? So that's the first thing we're going to point out. So when you call the fork system call, you don't put any parameters inside um, the calling function. So I hope that makes sense. So that's the first one. All right, so let's advance. So I'm going to call the fork system call right now. And right now, the other thing that I want you guys to know is that if this fork system call fails, it will return negative one. Okay, so that's another thing to, to note. So if the fork system call fails, it returns negative one. So right now, I would need a, a, a variable to store the return value so I can be able to check if my fork call was actually successful or not. And to do that, I'm going to need to create a variable of data type PID underscore T. So I'm actually creating a variable with that data type because the fork system call literally should return the PID of the child. Okay, so like I told you guys, the PID underscore T data type is actually a special data type that helps us store the PID of processes. So I'm just going to create a variable right here. So PID underscore T, I'm going to call it the name of the variable will be PID. All right, so just to keep it simple. And I'm going to do a check on this. I'm going to say if PID is equals to negative one so at negative one we understand that our fork system call was unsuccessful isn't it so i'm gonna write right here p error um um was un unsuccessful unsuccessful okay i'm gonna just print this out unsuccessful and then i'm gonna type in return all right so i want to actually exit my main function from here with that exit status of one but just in case it was successful, I'm going to write print f after for I became two. Okay, so um, if this um fork system call was actually successful, it's supposed to print out this statement right here on my terminal. So let's just keep it simple for now and run this and try to understand the behavior of our function. So return zero, just like that save this okay um gcc fr okay just like that so let me run this and let's try to observe um, our outputs all right guys so can you guys actually see what's happening right here so i've been able to draft out how our program program actually run in this um five steps and i'm going to show you right now so when we actually executed our program right here, so this is where we actually go to execute our program right here. When we executed it, um, five things actually happened. Before fork, I was one was printed, which is the first step right here. So before fork I was, was printed, I was one. Then after fork, I became two was printed right here. So this is for this, okay. And this is for this. Now, the next thing I want to show you right here is that before this after fork I became to was printed out the second time, you realize that I returned back to my shell program right here. So you see my shell program was actually, or my shell process was actually um, executed or I returned back to it again. So this is for this, I return to the shell process. All right. The fourth thing I want to show you is that after fork I became two um, was actually printed out. So this guy after fork I became two was printed out twice. All right. So in between when after fork was print after fork I became two, the first one and the second was printed out. You realize that I returned to the shell process for a moment, 
and then i printed out this guy right here on the terminal so this is for this and then finally you realize that normally when you execute a program what happens is that you return back to your shell and you have the ability to receive inputs from your keyboard but right now after i executed this program something strange happened i did not return so this is for this so this does not return back to the shell process i did not return back to my shell process so why exactly do i have this anomaly i'm going to show you right now okay guys so i've been able to write a few powerpoints i would like you guys to take note of and then i've been also able to write my code right here concisely so i could just give a little illustration as to what's happening so let's see how far we can go so what's happening is this so right here before fork was one was printed out right here so this is actually what's happening from our code then next what happened was that pid um, equals to fork so at this point the fork system call was actually called right here so this was where we called this um, fork and what happened was that at this point a child process was created right here okay so this is where we actually got to create our, our child process from definition the fork system call i told you guys actually creates a child process so it gets created right here but you don't see anything on the screen at this point obviously it, uh, this our fork operation was actually successful because unsuccessful doesn't get printed out on our terminal but check out what's happening right here the next thing we see is that right now after fork i became two was printed out right here okay so that's what you have right here isn't it and next was that a return statement was actually called so right now we are currently it is the parent process that is running currently okay so the parent of this parent process right now is actually the shell process remember what we talked about in the add and the subtract um videos um, um when we talked about the pid and the ppid so the parent of this one right now is currently the shell process so when you return from here you return literally to the parent process so that's actually what happens so when you call the return statement right here you return back to the shell process that was previously running before i executed this guy right here okay so then immediately i return back to the parent what happens is that the child kicks in okay so once the parent is done the child kicks in and like i told you the child is actually a duplicate of this same program so how the child actually works is that it starts to it starts to um execute the next instruction following the, the fork system call so it will execute the next instruction following the fork system call that's how the child will work so basically what's going to happen is this before fork i was born was actually called before this fork system call was called isn't it so that's why when the child begins to execute it doesn't execute this one right here it doesn't execute this right here because this was actually called before the fork system call was called rather it will begin to execute what all the statements or instructions that followed the fork system call and we can see that after fork this text right here was printed out after the fork system call was called so let me just go back to the definition it says right here that after a new child is processed after a new process is created both processes will execute the next instruction following the fork system call so that's why this guy gets executed and before fork hours one gets printed out only once because the child process doesn't execute this guy so after fork i became two was then printed out on the terminal the next thing i want you guys to take note of is that the child will also come right here to execute this return statement isn't it because it's a duplicate program right but by definition when the child comes right here to execute this return statement it should return back to the parent right but the issue is that the parent has already first of all executed and exited so when the child executes the return statement it can't find the parent in the memory to return to so let's come over to the second powerpoint right here it says right here when child exits it returns back to the parent so this is the default operation but if parent has already exited 
before child returns, the, the child gets stranded in what is called a zombie state. So basically what's happening is that right now the child is done executing. He wants to exit back to his daddy. But his daddy has already left before he came back. So the child right now is stranded. Alright, so I don't know if you guys are guessing. It's like, for example, you, you and your child came out to do something and then you went out to do what you came to do. And you also sent your child to also do something. And your child doesn't know the way back home, okay? So, and then before the child returned from, you know, doing what you sent him to do, you already left. And when your child eventually comes up, what will happen is that the child will get stranded at that location. So that's what's actually happening under the hood. So that's why you see that what you're seeing right here is that the child wants to go back to the daddy, but daddy is missing in the memory. So the child is right now stranded in the memory so he doesn't really know what to do right now so this state where the child has finished executing but cannot exit is what is called a zombie state right here and um, i did not make this up okay so um, i'm not just making this up this is actually an official name and i'm going to show you um, in our next video but we can actually rectify this phenomenon with what is called the weight system call and there are a bunch of things i'm also going to be introducing but right now um, this is just the basics of the frog system course you use it to, ch to create child processes okay so a child process is a duplicate of the of the parent process but there are a bunch of differences one of them being that the child process will have a different process id and i realized that there are a bunch of other um, concepts which you did not touch in this video but it's all good um let's let's take it one step at a time anyway so i hope you guys enjoyed this so if you did you want to i want to consider subscribing all right so you get up to date with the videos which i'll be uploading all right so um if you like the video as usual like it share it okay so that's it from me for now okay i'll see you in the next one